please welcome David Popperwell from the New Conservatives. Hello, David. Fraser, nice to see you. And you. Um, you and I go back a little way, actually. Well, we do, but I thought we'd just keep um, you know, the private lives out of it. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> we're, uh, we're both radio people, and uh, David has featured on NPR in the past. And that, that, it's a good place to start off, really. You, you've got links to uh, ethnic communities. You're a, a small business owner. Um, the New Conservatives are, are quite a polarising party. It's not a fit I would have put with you. Well, I'm surprised you would say that. I don't see how we're possibly polarised. We, uh, we have no particular problem where people come from, who people are. Uh, we enjoy everybody. We're very multicultural. Our own party has candidates in all seats, uh, as opposed to some of the major parties don't even have that. Um, we have several, several nationalities right across the board. Mm -hmm. So I don't think we're polarising at all. We, we're a, a very happy group and a team of people. Some of your policies would indicate that you are quite a polarising party. There seems to be a, a, a lack of respect for choice in the LGBT community, for example. Not at all. We don't have a problem with people who, who whatever people are. If you happen to be gay, for example, that's fine. You're gay. We don't have a problem with that. We don't think that you need to be hung, drawn and caught in any way, shape or form. Uh, you are what you are. But you don't want people, for example, to have gender reassignment surgery. We are happy for people to have gender reassignment surgery. Uh, we believe it should happen when people are of an age where they can make a proper informed decision on it, and we're more than happy for that to happen. But you would rather uh, government funding was spent on counselling as opposed to the surgery I think itself. so, yes. I, it, our experience has been, and people that are involved in that industry have said there's been so many instances where people have gone for gender reassignment surgery and two years later have wanted to complete new turn. It just wasn't the answer for them. And we believe there should be proper counselling before those decisions are made and Al proper assistance. Alternatively, though, what you're potentially doing is driving people that do desperately want to undergo surgery to go to other countries to do that, perhaps with less safe protocols. In, in New Zealand, we only do a handful anyway. We only do, I think it's single figures. There's only one surgeon who comes from overseas to do it. Uh, very, very few of them. And most people that want any kind of... Uh, reassignment surgery, as most people that want even facelifts have to have it done overseas. Fair enough. Uh, the, the other side where I drew my polarising uh, comments from was, uh, as you say, you don't seem to mind who people are and their identity, that's fine, but you don't necessarily want to hear the voices of Tangata Whenua as perhaps they are at the moment. Why is that? Because you're excluding them from various platforms and places in your portfolios. We have taken to find a candidate standing all over the countryside, and we have absolutely no problem with that. We, um, we think that uh, we are very concerned about the possibility of race-based legislation. We believe that legislation should be for all people, and uh, we think, in fairness to everybody, everybody should uh, come under legislation, and because you happen to be a particular race, we don't know whether there should be special reasons. There are in some cases, but we're not overly tight on that. Uh, the Tangata Whenua plays an important part. We um, are very, very close to the third article of the treaty. Um, we respect that. We respect the language. We believe uh, there should be government funding for Toreo, and uh, we don't think it should be compulsory, but we're very, very happy to have that government funded. It seems to be in stark contrast to what a lot of local councils are doing at the moment. I mean, Palmerston North uh, Council is a good example where they've been quite insistent that Tangata Whenua should have a voice around the table. At local government level, we're talking more about, I, I suppose, central government, there will always be Tangata Whenua in both local <laughs> councils and also in national politics, and uh, there is a voice to be heard. No, that's not entirely accurate, though, is it? Because we, we've seen, we, well, firstly, we've seen a, a community uh, in this country that are staunchly opposed to recognising Tangata Whenua, which is different from someone uh, of Māori heritage standing in an, ele an election. This is about recognising Tangata Whenua and giving them a, a place around the table. Well, the original concept of the policy was that, and I go back to Article 3 of the treaty, um, we believe it's very important to uphold that. We uphold everybody, no matter who they are. Tangata Whenua have a very special place in New Zealand. We support that, we believe that, and we respect that. And um, we believe anybody in New Zealand too that comes from other countries 
uh, different nationalities, different cultures, they have a place in New Zealand as well. So we don't particularly like some policies that are race-based. Uh, we believe that uh, policies that are out there should be for all. Do you believe that the views you hold are widely held in Palmerston North? In Palmerston North? Um, I've chatted to a lot of people when I go around the houses talking to people. Um, I haven't found any strong objection to the policies that we have. Most people are very happy with uh, the policies we have, say, on abortion, uh, on euthanasia. Um, they understand the kind of legislation that's been put through, particularly under COVID, and we think not in a very wide, uh, uh, widely publicised way. I think when people understand what the legislation say, they're quite horrified at what it says, and most people don't really understand the ifs and buts of it. Mm. And when you start talking to them about those sorts of things, they say, I never realised it was that serious. So it's really a case of getting that information out to people and saying, this is who we are, this is what we stand for. And uh, our biggest policy is, you know, we're big on strong families, um, healthy families, and families that have dreams and a future. When I drive into work every day, I pass a new Conservative billboard, and it says New Zealand... Oh, my face is my face, I'm sorry. <laughs> no, this one just has words on it. Uh, it says NZ, not UN. Yes. What does that mean? Well, the reality is that we believe that New Zealand is governed far too far by the UN. We believe that we can do a far better job ourselves. For example, we send billions of dollars to the UN in fees, in costs, every year. We believe that money is far better spent in New Zealand. Do we not get anything from the UN? I, well, um, maybe nothing that's really worthwhile. If you, if you look at the three, three or four billion dollars, how much do we actually get out of that in real terms? Global That's a lot of money. Sorry? Global partnerships? Yeah, discussion? Are, yeah, we're always saying, always saying that some of the things that the UN says they want us to do, we should not be in a position where we have to agree with it. It should be properly debated in Parliament, and Parliament should make that decision. OK, into the quick fire round, David. The cannabis legalisation and control, yes no. or no? No. no. Uh, the end of life choice? No. no. Uh, can you speak any to Reo or demonstrate any sign? Um, I, I, I can pronounce it. In fact, I used to read the news in Māori for several years on various radio stations around New Zealand. As far as uh, um, we were taught pronunciation in Māori, French and German back in the old days. <laughs> and um, so I can read it, I can pronounce it, I can read it from script, but as far as actually communicating with it, it's at a very basic level. And sign language, while I respect it muchly, I don't do it. Marvellous. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, David Popperwell. Thank you.